Okay. Hi. Welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about a couple of different things. First of all, we will be talking about the Kana kit reveal. But before that, let's get into a couple of different announcements that have happened since the Toru kit reveal. And so let me just scroll down a little bit and you will see that here is Toru's kit reveal with her pretty decent skills. And so from there, my first prediction was kind of right. We do have Elma coming through as a five star water unit probably. I mean, we see water splashes. I see a water tail. She's probably a forest unit. But all jokes aside, she is looking like a five star. She is looking like she is going to be coming as a water unit. And then right after that, we actually got Lucor. And Lucor's art is pretty indicative of like a forest typing. We'll see, but I don't know how you can interpret that elsewhere. Although some of us would look at Fleur's art and think like, uh, anyway, I digress. So as for Lucor, she will be a five star unit as well. Very, very likely to be forest. And then lastly, we have old mate Fafnir over here who is determined to be a four star unit. Now this one's a little bit interesting because I don't believe we have any four star rate ups. I'm thinking of like Tweety, I'm thinking of was Cordy four star? I can't remember. But thinking back like all of our welfare units have been five star and our four star units have not been on rate up. Like I'm actually not 100% sure on how they're going to handle Fafnir. Maybe they'll just make an exception and Fafnir will be a four star rate up. Something like that. However, judging from all of these assets, like these dark swells and stuff, I honestly can't tell like if he's going to be fire or whatever. I'm probably still leaning towards forest because of like a curses kind of theme. And so with that, I think that's pretty much all caught up on reveals, except for the Kana kit reveal, which we will talk about right now over here. And so my guys, welcome to the world of Kana. Kana has been revealed to be part of the independent faction, as you can see up over here, and she will be a thunder sniper which is um that's two out of two wrong very interesting right very interesting maybe i should stop doing prediction videos because oh but come on man like dragons and detonator or dragons and sniper seriously guys like come on anyway let's go through this kit let's evaluate it a little bit because i've been seeing a lot of uh, let's put it like negative opinions about this kit a lot of people are calling it like under tuned or pretty bad in a way but to be honest when i looked through it i thought it kind of looked all right all right and so to kick things off let's have a look at the base stats almost 3.3k attack 1175 of the defense and 10142 of the hp and so comparing this against some of the other thunder snipers let's go over to mia she has 3.1k which is less and actually looking at the other two stats over here she has less stats overall maybe it can be attributed to her being a five star similar kind of story for vivian and i think it's for the same reason and then moving on to schwartz same same to be honest and so next we've got eve who is going to be our six star sniper and you can see that this 3297 is probably a little bit more in line with this figure over here for kana 3295 over here 3297 on this side 1130 here and then 1175 here however for some reason kana has an insane amount of hp so that's 10 142 and this is 9528 that's a whopping about 700 more of the hp not exactly sure what they're doing with like this hp over here I don't see any mechanics that has to do with more HP. But with that being said, let's move on to Luke over here, who is going to have 3.6K attack. So like we went through all of these five star snipers, right? It was like 3K, 2K, 3K, something like that. But then Luke, for some reason, mother effing Luke has 3.6K attack. Like what in the world is going on, right? Like why is Luke such an anomaly? 3.6K. Most detonators don't even actually reach 3.6K. So I'm pretty surprised as to like how freaking busted this guy looks on paper but anyway alas let's get back to it so it looks like he does trade up some of his defensive capabilities in exchange for that god tier attack and so with that let's move on to kafka who is obviously going to have way uh, wait a second she is a four star sniper and she is able to get 3k attack that's more than vivian uh -huh. Honestly, I think the lesson here is that our girl Vivian is getting done dirty. So to a dog, can you please buff Vivian? All right, and so that's the base stats out of the way. And obviously you can compare it to some of the snipers in some of the other elemental types. 
But that was just a quick look and honestly, I just wanted to flex Luke's big as attack. And so with that, let's move on to the next thing, which is the active skill down here. Again, with the three CD and the preemptive strike on the breakthrough six, I, I'm honestly not a massive fan of them showing off like the entire kit with the BT6 because it's really hard to tell whether the CD3 is going to be a CD4 on BT0 or if it's actually CD3 the entire way from one or rather zero through to six. Honestly, my evaluation from Toru's kit stands the same. If it is a CD3 and it's CD3 the entire way, then it's good. However, if it is actually CD4 at BT0, then I'm thinking it's like... Uh -uh. Alright, and so for the skill itself, Sky Glare selects a tile and deals 280% damage to enemies along the way and on adjacent tiles. On top of that, it also knocks them back as far as possible and enemies along the way, so enemies that are only on the center one, will receive 1.3 times damage. So what this sounds like is very much like Charon's train combined with Michael's teleport. It very much sounds like a 3 tile wide laser beam that you can aim anywhere and it will probably be able to go diagonal it can go yeah like I said anywhere actually sounds pretty interesting but I think this kind of already exists with Michael except for Kana's sky glare the utility is the knocking them back as opposed to Michael teleporting to the destination and for the central stream it looks like they will be getting 1.3 times damage it just looks like a lot of damage to me. However, what's funny about this is that again, this seems more like a detonator skill rather than a sniper skill. So I'm not really sure what to make of this. Like why is Tour Dog giving these detonator-like skills to these snipers? The only thing that comes to mind is that this deals 280% damage to enemies along the way. It's very similar to, I believe like Requiem's or like Mia's active skill where they just attack everything along the way, but only attack on one tile. So even if there was like a multi-tile boss or unit along the way, I think potentially they might even only take one type of damage. Like they might only take one hit as opposed to four hits if it was a two by two. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm starting to think about this sky glare as well as Toru's active. Perhaps it doesn't hit all the tiles, perhaps it only hits the enemies once. All right, so moving on from that one, chain combo lightning strikes 12 chain, deals 180% damage to four enemies within three surrounding clusters. Again, with the limited range, Range with the constrained range. I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that, but if we were to compare that to a couple of the other units, so let's have a look at Mia. 150% to four nearest enemies versus 180% within three surrounding clusters. I guess at that point, like looking at that and looking at some of the other ones, it's kind of like trading damage for range. All right, so that was Mia over here, 150% to four nearest enemies. Let's have a look at Vivian, who is going to be at 170% to five enemies within three surrounding clusters. And so this is probably a lot more closer to Kana's chain combo than it was Mia's. And so here the trade off is 170% versus 180% for five versus four. But to be honest they both sound kind of good let's have a look at Schwartz one and that doesn't even count because that's like a freaking detonator skill moving on to Eve's that also kind of looks like a detonator skill to me as well oh uh, you know why because Eve is actually a detonator all right Goodbye, Eve. <laughs> All right, so looking at Luke over here, our god of damage, 165 damage four times assigned randomly to enemies within three surrounding clusters. This one, this one is quickly starting to become my favorite because it works in both like a single target and an AOE capacity. I think it's quite decent. And these days I probably would choose like something like this over Kana's one over here, which is very much more the traditional sniper in the Alchemy Stars archetype. And so yeah, that's Luke's one. And then we have Kafka over here who is going to be AOE damage kind of thing. You know, reading this skill very much reminds me of Toru's. It's, I, I still don't really know how I feel about this one. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't really used like some of these AOE snipers. Whenever I kind of wanted to use them, I either A, just went for a detonator or B, it just looked like really awkward to use. So I just used something else. All right, and so that's the chain combo covered off. And so lastly, we have equipment skill reign of dragons. Let me shrink that a little bit so you guys can see that. So when all Thunder Aurorians or other Dragon Maid characters trigger their active skills, this is a pretty good start. I like this. And the reason I like this is because whilst there are conditionals for Thunder Aurorians or other Dragon Maid characters, it's the fact that it's Aura that makes this interesting, right? Because it means that she can either synergize with Thunder or the Dragon Maid characters. 
And so this might be an opportunity to actually play non-mono teams, which is quite exciting. Like, I don't know about you guys, but when we have those stages that are like, oh, run away from these monsters, survive for six turns, I just take five teleporters and then I just teleport back and forth. And so I'm not saying that this is going to be like that, but like it might be something like that. Anyway, moving on, Kana gains one charge up to 10 times and every charge increases basic attack by 3% and half the charges will be cleared after the round ends. And so the last bit of all of this is that Kana gains two charges charge when wave starts okay this is uh this is pretty interesting so first of all i need to make the distinction between the round and the wave a wave only starts if you successfully clear all of the monsters and then the next wave begins on the other hand when a round ends is like essentially when you finish your turn and then the enemies finishes their turn so whilst this charge system itself actually looks kind of cool it could go up to 30 percent attack i think it's actually like extremely unlikely that you're going to be able to get to the 30 percent stack especially considering this negative mechanic over here where you lose half your charges after every single friggin round so let's be a little bit more conservative and treat this as like 15 percent attack is that good in the context of alchemy stars i think that's i think that's okay can't really compare this equipment skill to anyone else's especially because like some of these equipment skills are actually quite unique i mean they should be are these called like unique equipments actually no they're not called unique equipments wrong game my bad but yeah just looking at something like luke's one alexandre cloak active skills and chain combos give one stack of parasitic mark and then they stack up to nine times each time an enemy moves one tile each stack of parasitic mark deals 12 percent damage like that's pretty exciting that's it's actually kind of interesting right whereas old mate kana it's just another damage skill which is very very similar to toru which was just another damage skill as well again i wish they were a little bit more innovative on this but like this is what we get and so i guess after all of that like what would my judgment be on this little round cutie mm. <laughs> Oh, what the frick. I think the deciding factor, to be honest, for me is going to be how does Sky Glare work. As I mentioned before, Sky Glare could work one of two ways, right? It could work like in the way of a detonator or it could work in the way of a sniper. And if it's working in the way of a detonator and it has a base cooldown at BT0 of 3, then I would say that combined with the fact that she has a quite a high amount of attack stat for a sniper she looks okay like she doesn't look stellar she doesn't look like she's game breaking like when i read novio's equipment stuff and his active skill and his chain combo and all of his kit i was like oh my god this man's gonna change the world but when i'm looking at this kit over here i'm looking at kana's kit it's kind of like you know you know what this this could certainly be good i don't think it's gonna be utterly busted but i don't think it's gonna be entirely trash either i don't know if she turns out to be trash then maybe you just need to hop over onto the the discord and leave some feedback but to be honest i'm looking at this and it kind of looks like a standard character it doesn't look too bad it doesn't look too good and to be honest that's like a really great way of designing right like you don't want to power creep you kind of want to give like the horizontal expansion in your roster so yeah to be honest she looks okay like a lot of people are saying oh man she's like freaking trash i ain't rolling for her. i'm gonna roll for an uriel instead but given the chance i'd probably still give her a shot like to me she's very much like revy revy was kind of like oh man i could do with her I could do without and so I just went for her and I got her and I'm like okay that's nice that's another DPS and yeah that's how I kind of feel about Kana but Toru on the other hand I freaking love Toru Toru's so cute man I'm freaking going all in for her and if I don't get her you guys already know what's happening actually just looking at Toru's kit over here there is a really really fine distinction here deals 360% damage to 13 tiles in a diamond shape whereas this one is not dealing damage to tiles it's dealing damage to enemies however However, with that being said, I just looked up Michael over here and it looks like he is actually dealing 320 damage to enemies, but we all know that he actually is going to attack every single tile along the way as well. I think it's actually fine. I think it is going to work like a detonator, this sky glare over here, especially because the ratios are kind of similar. 280, 320%, that's quite, it's, it's quite similar. I mean, it's 40% down, but it's still quite similar. But yeah, that's kind of where I am landing with Kana over here. Here. And so honestly, I think it's time for you guys to let me know how you feel about Kana. I think we can all agree that she is cute, round, and fluffy, but what I'm really asking about is her skill set over here. So my guys, let me know how you feel about her kit down in the comments below. Does it kind of discourage you from rolling for her? I don't know about you guys, but even if Toru was trash, I would still have rolled for her. And if you guys do share the same sentiments, then do let me know as well. But regardless, if you do end up dropping your thoughts down in the comments below, I would really appreciate it because it means you've watched up until the end of the video, so thank 
thank you guys so much. If you did like this video, then please like this video. And if you would like to see more, then please subscribe. But otherwise, as Kana once said for the second time, I think all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.